Okay. Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for January 31st, 2022. It's a Monday. This is the time of the week when we get together to talk about all things regarding CircuitPython. I'm Dan, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can go join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord, and there's an invite there to join the server. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel and the CircuitPython voice channel. We usually hold this meeting on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time in the United States, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday on Mondays. Uh, in the notes doc, there's a link to the calendar that you can add to your own personal calendar. And we give notes about uh, the upcoming meetings in Discord. If you want to know about the meetings and be notified, uh, get pinged, you can, add your, you can be added to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. So ask, that, ask for that. All right, I'll skip some of the other stuff that I said beforehand, and we'll start with community news. And I called some stuff from the uh, Circuit Py from the Python and Microcontrollers weekly newsletter that uh, Anne works on uh, most weeks. And uh, sign up for that newsletter if you haven't already. It's a great source of information. It has a lot of pictures. It has a lot of text. And if you join, you don't get added to any other mailing list. It's not used for marketing purposes whatsoever by Adafruit. You can sign up by going to adafruitdaily.com. Okay, so the top headline news that I found uh, from the newsletter. Uh, the first thing is that there's going to be a hack chat with Adafruit and Hackaday.io um, on Wednesday, this Wednesday, February 2nd at noon Pacific time. That's 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, Lamore, Lady, that's Lady Ada from Adafruit, Jeff Epler, who's in the chat here, and Phil from Adafruit will be hosting the Hack Chat. And uh, you can go to, um, to find out more about this chat, find out what the work that we've been doing on, on floppy disks. Oh, I just made a redundant post here. I'll delete it. I thought it was going to be a picture of a floppy disk. Um, so find out what all the kind of work that we're doing, reading all kinds of weird floppy disks and trying to write them too including weird copy-protected Commodore 64 disks and all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, next headline is that Apple is finally removing Python 2 in Mac OS 12.3. Um, if you've ever tried to use Python on uh, Mac OS, you know that there are a lot of versions and it's very hard to get um, your versions right. There's a famous XKCD cartoon about the morass that you can get into with different Python versions on um, on Mac OS. So it's be nice. This is going to be a nice thing to get rid of Python 2. The Python 2 hasn't been supported by the Python community for some time now, since 2020. For so for two years, and it doesn't get any bug fixes. And then uh, another. Um, Headline we've got here is that a company called Goliath, G-O-L-I-O-T-H, uh, has introduced a, a, an IoT cloud system for CircuitPython. Um, click on the link that's in the, in the notes if you want to know more, or that's in the text channel. What if you could open a text document on a device, write code, click save, and everything magically starts working? This is the promise of high-level programming languages like CircuitPython. Goliath Labs now has an SDK to utilize the language's fast prototyping capabilities. In addition to Goliath's cloud functions, it's super easy to pass data from a network device up to the Goliath cloud. Click Save to stream IoT device data to the cloud. So this is um, perhaps like similar to Adafruit.io. It's another service. It may suit your needs more or not. Take a look at it. OK, now we have another announcement of another 
upcoming uh, live event. The PiCast celebrates 10 years of Raspberry Pi. New episodes with Lady Ada, Lady Ada Eben Upton, and others. Adafruit's late Lemoore Freed will be on a live cast on February 15th, 2022. And there's a link for more information in the chat. And that February 15th is a Tuesday. Okay. So it won't conflict with this uh, meeting whatsoever. Now, a few more details about the CircuitPython Py uh, Circuit Weekly Newsletter, or sometimes it's called Python or Microcontrollers. Uh, th there are archives available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest Python and hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news on project, you can edit uh, next week's draft in uh, a GitHub uh, repo we have, you can submit a, a pull request with your changes. You could also, on Twitter, tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython, or you can email cpnews at adafruit.com. Any of those are equally great ways to tell us about developments that you'd like to see in the newsletter. Okie dokie. So now let me um, go on, take a timestamp here. Uh, the next section is called State of Circuit Python Libraries in Blinka. This uh, is a statistical overview of the entire project by the numbers. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from what we're up to. So it's kind of more qualitative, quantitative than qualitative. We'll talk about the project overall, then separately discuss the core libraries in Blinka. So we're mainly talking about statistics in GitHub, pull requests and issues and that kind of thing. So overall, in the past week, uh, there were 59 pull requests merged, 28 authors, uh, some new authors that I didn't recognize. They may have contributed before, I'm not sure. The Woodsy, Jingleheimer SE, Rimwolf Redux, and Tammy Makes Things are new that I saw, and there may be other new people as well. Thank you very much. There were 28 authors, there were 12 reviewers of pull requests, and there were 32 issues closed by 14 people and 30 opened by 20 people. So we're still keeping a kind of a, a stasis in terms of open and closed issues, in terms of the total number of open issues. So the next uh, section is we'll dive down into um, the core, the CircuitPython core, which is the firmware that you load that's in a UF2 file or a bin file. In the core, in the past week, 18 pull requests were, mer were merged by 14 authors. There were five reviewers. And right now, we have nine open pull requests. These statistics are from uh, I think midnight or so, so these numbers might be off a little bit. There were 10 closed issues by four people and 18 issues opened by 12 people. So we've got more new issues to look at. Um, we've got six active milestones. Um, we have some issues, 10 issues that we want to fix for the 720 release, 23 issues that we want to fix in the 7 series, and we've got eight issues for 800 which uh, need to be deferred for 8.0 because they're incompatible with 7. And we've got a lot of long-term issues open, 426. And we had three issues not assigned a milestone, but I assigned them a milestone this morning. So there should be zero of those right now. Next, we'll look at uh, statistics about the libraries. And Katni, you can go on for that. All right, how's my audio? Sounds good. Excellent. So uh, this section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as, uh, as well as a couple bonus libraries, um, or uh, repositories, rather. So across all of those repos, we had 40 pull requests merged over the last week uh, by 15 authors and 10 reviewers. And there's a couple things I want to point out. One, the oldest one was 239 days old. We're still getting through older PRs, which is excellent to see. 
And the other exciting thing is that we have 18 open pull requests across approximately 300 repositories. Um, so that's really amazing to see that number has gotten down so far, especially because there's always new PRs being put in. Um, so these are not necessarily all older PRs that we're still trying to get through. So we're getting close. I'm very excited. Um, we had 22 issues closed by 11 people and 11 opened by eight people, leaving us with 634 open issues. 236 of those are labeled good first issue. If you're interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more. If you are interested in reviewing, check out the open PRs, leave us a note, let us know you took a look at it, test it if you have the hardware. Um, and once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about uh, moving you into the actual review team. Um, if you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the uh, open issues. Um, if you're new to everything, Good First Issue is a great place to start. We also have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, and we're always available on Discord to help you. We want to assist you in contributing in whatever way works best for you. That's important to us, so never hesitate to ask questions. Um, there are a number of updated libraries over the last week, but no new libraries, uh, and so I will not read off all of the updates. Um, and like I said, the most uh, exciting thing going on with the libraries right now is getting through the older PRs um, and getting caught up. I am very happy that we are moving forward with that. And that's what we've got. Okay, thank you, Kat D. Okay, next is the Blinka section. Uh, Melissa, are you available to say what Blinka is and then describe what's going on? Yeah, um, Blinka is our uh, CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And uh, this week we had one pull request merged by one author and one reviewer. Uh, there are currently five open pull requests. Um, and there were zero closed issues by zero people and one open by one person, leaving a net of 69 open issues. There were 17,266 Pie Wheels downloads in the last month. We are currently supporting 87 boards. And that's it. OK, thank you very much. OK, our next section is um, Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. As I mentioned beforehand, uh, we're going to do this section in order from top to bottom. I start, and then we go in alphabetical order. Um, so we, we appreciate, this is a section where we appreciate what people are doing and give them thanks. Um, so I'll start, um, take a time code here. Um, first, I'd like to thank all our translators who've been making CircuitPython available and understandable for non-English speakers. We had the, a Russian translation added recently, and I really appreciate uh, all the work that translators do. There are some translators who are extremely good at keeping up with, go with, with uh, new changes and others who do it in batches. Either of those is fine. It makes using a CircuitPython much nicer for anybody who doesn't speak English natively. So thank you. Um, I just something somebody just un, un, uh, something went away there. Thank you. Okay, we were typed undo. Uh, let's move on to um, Charles. Go ahead, Charles. Unless you're just lurking. I just want to give a group hug to everybody. I I'm, I'm working on a uh, interesting musical project, and I'm really interested. Very much uh, appreciative of MicroPython. It's been a help. All right. You're very welcome. OK. OK. Uh, David Gloud is working. I'll read um, his contribution. Uh, thanks to maker Melissa for st Stream Deck controlled RGB message panel using Adafruit IO, Adafruit IO Learn Guide. And thanks to Brent and Lamore for some other MQTT Learn Guide. All right, thank you, uh, David. Next is Foamy Guy. 
All right, uh, thanks, Dan. Um, this week, Hug Reports for 560 uh, on GitHub is the username there. They submitted some typing and some other improvements to the MacroPad library uh, this week, so I appreciated them. Uh, to Tammy Makes Things for submitting their first CircuitPython PR, uh, and also I noticed they are planning to start streaming uh, on Twitch, which I'm uh, also really happy to hear about more folks getting into the, the streaming. I always like to throw in a stream while I work, so I'll be happy to have more making and CircuitPython related content over there. Uh, and then lastly to you, Dan, uh, for working on the secondary USB drive stuff. If I understand correctly, maybe that may give us the ability to edit uh, like files on an SD card, for instance, that are attached. Um, and I definitely think that would be a super cool uh, improvement. So thank you for working on that. That is right. Editing and at the very least looking at. And I realized that I, I missed um, reading some of my own items, so I'll finish them off because they disappeared while I was reading them. Uh, thanks to Tammy Make Things for her first core PR. Thanks to Emerge Reanimator for um, working on uh, generalizing the STM port and bringing it to new STM chips. And in the process, Emerge Reanimator has found several bugs in the STM port and has, has been fixing them, which is great. And thanks to Scott Tanut for uh, speedy progress uh, getting Nimble, using Nimble to uh, implement BLE on the Espressif uh, chips, the S3 right now. So thank you, Scott. Okay, okay, we'll move on to Jeff now. Hi there. I'll start off with a group hug. Um, I know there are some hugs that people deserve, but I forgot about them and blanked out while I was writing my notes a little bit late. A hug to everybody pitching in on the recent regressions and their fixes, like the uh, bus built-in bus stuff um, and so forth. And thanks particularly to Dan, who is integrating all of that into our 7.1 branch. And a big hug to Tammy Makes Things for your first PR. I uh, hope that there are many more. That's what I got. OK, thanks, Jeff. OK, and now Jerry. Hi, uh, thanks. Um, yeah, so hug to you, Dan, for that quick quick fix to the uh, SAMD51 issue that turned up yesterday. And uh, and thanks to Franklin for joining the moderator team. Okay, yes, thank you, to Fra thank you Franklin. Okay, um, next is Kathy. Yep, it is me. So first up, a hug report to Franklin for joining the Discord moderation team. Um, he is uh, Adafruit folks, does forum support, and was interested in joining us on Discord. So he's he's somewhat new both to Discord and to obviously to Discord moderation, um, but he is really excited to learn about everything, and we are excited to help. Um, a hug report to Tammy makes things for rejoining the community after what sounds like an incredibly rough year, and for their first PR. Uh, to Pete Cutler for the upcoming uh, Circuit Python Show podcast, to Foamy Guy for continuing to get through older library PRs. I know I said it earlier, but I'll say it again. Um, to Tectric for always being up for library work. It's been really great because we run into, you know, random documentation things that need to be fixed up, and sometimes the Adabot patches don't grab everything, and Tectric's been quick to jump in and help with cleanup and so on, and that's been greatly appreciated by both uh, Eva and myself. Um, to Carter for sending me a couple of Pi Zero Ws, because I can't for the life of me find mine, and I really wanted to use Zero W for a project I'm working on, and a group hug to the community for many reasons. But uh, specifically, I want to call out the effort that the current community members put into keeping the community welcoming and safe for both new and current folks. We as moderators uh, do this. That is, that is our purpose as admins and moderators. But we find pretty often that a, a lot of things that perhaps might be a moderation issue are handled by other community members. Um, and everything is very smooth. And so I really appreciate um, the effort that folks put into helping us moderate our community. And that's what I've got. All right, thank you, Katni. Okay, um, K-Match, could you go ahead? Sure, okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, I'm getting back into building CircuitPython and I wanna give thanks to, to Scott, Dan, and Naradoc for helping me uh, get over some humps to be able to build again. Uh, and on a related note, uh, thanks to Jerry for identifying or uh, I guess uh, noting a uh, similar issue from what I saw on Pi Portal build. And Dan, thanks for fixing it. Okay, thanks a lot, y'all. Okay, you're welcome. All right, thanks, uh, Melissa. You can go ahead. 
I just wanted to give a group hug to everyone. Okay, thank you. Okay, now uh, I'll read Mark Gambler's uh, contributions. Um, thanks to Tanut for catching a few more mistakes in my latest PR, and thanks to Tammy Make Makes Things for their first PR. And now, um, Tammy Makes Things, would you like, I don't know if you have audio, but go ahead, if you do. I think I have audio, um, assuming you all can hear me. Yes, we can. Good, excellent. So. Thank you, everyone. I want to give a, a thanks to everybody, but especially to you, Dan, and to Michael for helping me get my first PR through that release process and through some weirdness in the CI that was caused by an update that was released to Black yesterday, which caused a whole bunch of things to not work in weird and mysterious ways. Um, so thank you, everybody. And also a group hug because the community here is amazing. I'm super happy to be participating again and to kind of echo something that Katni said about this being a safe community. I've had so many places in my life where my interest in electronics and making and computers and all sorts of other stuff has been dreadfully stomped upon by ridiculous gendered nonsense in our society. And the CircuitPython community is amazing and I really appreciate you all. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much, Tammy, and we appreciate your contributions too. We're really glad to have you uh, back and active. Okay, Scott, go ahead. Hello. Uh, first, a hug to Michael for the type PR. Um, also go, goes by purples, I think. Uh, next, a hug to the mind virus for the links to the audio worklet API in an issue. Um, I'm always looking for interesting audio APIs, so it's certainly not a short-term thing, but uh, happy to have those uh, links stored in an issue so that we can look back on them later. Uh, hug report to Lady Ada, who uh, has been doing a lot of reviews, and I wanted to just thank her for those. And then finally, um, a welcome and a thank you to Tammy Make Things for her NeoPixel PR as well. Okay, thanks, Scott. And uh, finally... Um... Tetric, but Tetric is not here, so I'll read their contribution. Um, thanks to Katni for providing with me with opportunities to help out with some of the library inter infrastructure and a group hug. All right, so um, let me now clean up a bit here, and the next section is status updates. This is our time to sync up on what we're doing. Um, again, we'll start, I'll start, and then we'll go in alphabetical, alphabetical order uh, in the note doc. Um, it's both an, an opportunity to describe what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you plan to be doing up until the next meeting. And it's also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks relevant to what people are working on. And if you if there's something that you want to talk about that's more of a discussion, uh, we can you can mention it in status updates, and we can discuss it in more detail in uh, the In the Weeds section. So now I'll start. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, for the past several weeks, I've been testing multiple logical units for USB mass storage. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to work very well on uh, Linux, on, on Mac OS and Windows. It works great on Linux and TAC who's our tiny USB person. He's the originator of tiny USB. He is currently celebrating um, Lunar New Year, Tet, and he'll be, so he was gonna do some testing that he's off for a while. So this work will be on hold for a while until he, he finishes his, his vacation. Okay, the other thing I've been doing is working on fixing some I2C bugs, particularly with respect to ESP32 and researching some other eyes, uh, I2C bugs. I have a PR in progress that should fix a lot of the current problems on the ESP um, chips right now. And as I mentioned, I fixed that uh, a, a bug, a build bug having to do with a previous PR for SAMD, and I'm doing support and I'm doing the more doing more support recently. I'm not really sure whether it's deliberate or just because there's more support to do. And I've been triaging a lot of triaging a lot of bugs that. Things that might be bugs, but are may or may not be, and so I have to investigate to find out. So that's been taking some time. Okay, so uh, Charles, you can go next. Okay, I, I'm 
I'm basically working on uh, uh, what I've been doing and I'm still going to do, continue on with, is my synth, my keyboards for, and other devices for my synthesizer uh, music making rig. It, it's, I, uh, the only thing I can't, I, ju uh, I just got a bunch of keyboard boards that I'm going to use for various uh, things. And I'm still looking for sliders. Uh, have they? Does anybody know if they've been in uh, in uh, available? Although I keep looking, and every time I look, I, they seem to be out of stock. I'm not so having you, much. Stock. If anything is out of stock, you should add yourself to the please notify subscription. Yeah, list. I always, I constantly do that. Okay. Because Otherwise, I would. Uh, every time I've gotten the notice that they're in stock, they immediately sell out. Yeah. And see. Right. I'm sorry. You have to. Right. No. I have to keep after it. Right. You have to be right. really on the ball. And I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Okay. I I, I I do just want to point out too, Dan, that it's. I'm glad, Charles, that you do that, but it also functions as a way for Adafruit to prioritize what they make. So it is yeah. always good to get on that list because um, yeah. they will make more. It absolutely makes sense. Thank you. I would also like to remind you that you can always check our uh, other distributors, especially DigiKey and Mauser. They sometimes have stock when we don't. So, uh, and it's fine to buy from them. That's, we get money mm -hmm. too that way. It's so check it out. I, there are, there are I, a number I, of things I, that I've told people to buy from DigiKey recently when we haven't had stock. And so that's yeah, fine. I like, no, but I do like to buy direct from Adafruit yeah, to yeah. support you guys and every and Lamar and everybody else that makes all the one uh, the, the neat electronics that allows me to do what I want to do. Sure. But we we do we do get money through the distributor, so don't don't worry if we don't have it. And you can always you can always uh, buy something else from us later. <laughs> okay. I'll move on to David Cloud, who's who's uh, lurking. David says, playing with MQTT from Feather S2 to a mosquito on a Pi. I tried all the simple tests and figured out how to go to my server rather than Adafruit.io. Hopping for networking to integrate with the asynchronous, hoping, I guess, hoping for networking to integrate with the asynchronous aspect and follow the great learn guide. Tested NeoPixel on Pi Zero 1W and it failed on me. I wrote an issue. Future plan, do something like the Learn Guide Stream Deck controlled RGB message panel using Adafruit IO, but with a Pi portal rather than a Stream Deck and my own MQTT server rather than Adafruit IO. So making your own mini cloud. Sounds, sounds very interesting. Okay. All right, Foamy Guy, are you available? Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, so a couple things from this week. I recorded a, a video for the Nico Cat animation uh, project and put the finishing touches on that guide and just put that into moderation um, this morning. So that should be coming out soon, I think. Um, I updated the documentation section inside the README files in Cookie Cutter, uh, the thing that generates new libraries whenever we make new libraries, to include a new link to the Read the Docs pages. Um, I started working on a converter script for Winamp skins. Um, so the way I have it set up now, you download your preferred uh, Winamp skin preview, and then you run this script on it, and it will uh, resize it and chop a few parts out so that it's ready to load onto a Pi portal and then start playing some music from there. Um, I have continued on PR reviews. Uh, one of the more interesting ones, uh, one of the ones I should say I found more interesting this week was um, really learning more about button matrix circuits. I kind of had a rough idea of how that worked um, and I've used them in a couple of projects but never stopped and really considered the way that the um, the circuit is built and I had to do that this week to make sure I had uh, a circuit set up to test the PR with HT16K33 uh, breakout. And then um, another thing that I will be working on this week is a new project that's pulling data from a government um, web traffic data source. The government has a website where you can pull JSON data from uh, traffic through all their different various sites. So I'll be working on that this week. And that's what I have. Thank you. All right. That's very interesting. All right. Thank you. All right. Jeff, uh, can you go ahead? Hi. Um, so I've 
been remaining in floppy land. Uh, so last week I wrote code for the RP2040's PIO peripheral for very highly accurate timing when reading and writing the flex data from floppies. Uh, while this code is going to go into Arduino first, being able to prototype the PIO code in Python was invaluable. Um, this week, uh, I have floppy stuff, and that will remain outside of CircuitPython for the moment. I'll be on the floppy hack chat this week, and we will eventually bring the floppy stuff into CircuitPython, but mostly after we finish the implementation over in Arduino. And part of what I'm doing over there is taking into account the differences between the coding environments. We did this previously with uh, Protomatter, which powers RGB matrix. There's the Arduino library, and then we selectively reuse the code in CircuitPython and so we share the implementation and it reduces the overall development time. But there's a lot of, uh, dare I say, moving parts in floppies. So it's just taking a little while uh, to get it all done. So that's where I'm at. OK, thank you, Jeff. Um, Jerry, are you ready and available? Yep. If I can just hit the unmute button once and get the cat out of here. OK. Um, where'd it go? Yeah, so uh, last week I spent a bunch of time playing with the uh, the microbit v2 build um, just for fun. And um, one of the things that was playing with both the microbit and the ESP32 C2 build was one of the problems was it was hard to load stuff onto them because there's no there's no circuit pi drive. But it turns out that Ampy does work. Um, had to play around a little bit. Um, the the v2 build the microbit didn't have bin ASCII, and one of the Functions is used a lot in Happy required it, so I put in a PR and got that built into it, and that that worked fine. But then Happy itself turns out um, it's it's really based for MicroPython, and it uses UBIN ASCII. Um, so I found a way to quickly patch that so that it will import um, bin ASCII if UBIN ASCII isn't there. So I put a PR and an issue into the Happy site, but it's really not clear looking at Happy whether it's being maintained anymore. So Keep an eye on it. They're working on some new version, which I'm not quite sure what the status of it is e either. Um, supposedly, R shell is usable, although I tried it and I it, it it didn't work for me when I tried it one time. And also, it'll have the same bin ASCII problem. So I'll look at fixing that. But I, I'll have to get back to R shell to see if, if that works better. But it's nice to just have a tool like Ampy to be able to upload a file quickly. Um, especially before the BLE workflow is, is actually up and running, which is, was the case on the C3. But I, I think that's changing very rapidly. So maybe this is all unnecessary because uh, I did find, too, that the uh, using on the C3, um, I'm sorry, on the on the microbit v2, the um, uh, code.circuitpython.org uh, BLE flow worked really well. Um, so that was kind of fun to play with. And then this other project going that came out of a, actually out of a, a, a Discord post or a forum post, I can't remember which, but somebody asked for help with it. And then I found it was a really neat project. And that was to take an RFM9X and an MLX90640 um, thermal camera. And so have a remote transmitter that then transmits via radio to a, to a receiver, which then displays the data. And so I finally got a, uh, that working uh, in a way I really like it. it, it uh, and you can, uh, so the, the, the transmitter is an RP2040 with the RFM9X feather wing and the MLX camera. And the receiver is another RP2040 with a, another radio, but with a 2.4 inch TFT display. And so that's been kind of fun. And also I've been trying to work on, on using a Raspberry Pi as the receiving side, but I need to learn a lot more about Pillow. Uh, so far, I can get a black and white image, but I get to got to learn a lot, a lot more about how to do displays on the Pi. So that's been my fun. Okay, thank you, Jerry. Okay, Katni is up next. As I'm adding to my notes. All right. So last week, I finished up the uh, adding Arduino templates to all the RP2040 board guides. We held off on that because we, two things, we wanted to make sure that Arduino was solid for the RP2040 and we wanted to figure out which direction things were going to go in terms of what core folks would use. And uh, I think it's been a very good thing that people drifted to the Earl Philhauer core 
because um, they are incredibly responsive for PRs and updates. And um, it's, it's very solid. It works really well. So we updated all the guides to reflect that. Um, I started the guide for the arcade button Stemma QT breakout, which is a breakout where you can use the um, arcade button quick connect cables to connect four arcade buttons to it. And then you have basically a Stemma QT arcade button setup. Um, we It came out a bit ago, but the guide never got started. A bunch of other stuff took priority, but people have been asking about code. So we're, we're, we're bumping that up and getting it done and some miscellaneous. Uh, today so far, updated the newsletter like I do usually on Fridays, but uh, totally forgot to do that because I got hooked into doing the arcade demo guide. Um, I updated the. I had a I had a simple test going where you just press the button and the light turns on, but uh, Lamore wanted it to um, pulse the LED PWM uh, when you press the button instead. So I wrote that code this morning. Um, scrambled to continue slash finish up my CircuitPython 2022 posts and ordered the hardware that I forgot to bring with me to do the async IO template. Uh, this week's plan, finish the 2022 post, finish the arcade STEM QT guide. Um, there's a feature in the learn system called groups that uh, you can basically um, create a group and it links a bunch of different guides together. And um, I was totally unaware of this feature. And the developers are looking at making it more accessible to users and more obvious. And they also want feedback on both the background end of it, which would be creating the groups, and about the foreground end of it, which is the user experience. So I'm going to dive into making a few groups and, and providing any feedback I have on that. Um, I think a Cir Circuit Python getting started group would be great. Uh, we often link you know, three or four guides to folks who say, hey, I'm new to CircuitPython, where should I get started? And like, here's these four guides. Well, now we can just link the group once I get that going. Um, so that'll be good. Uh, so it was brought up a, like last week or the week before that circuitpython.org slash trademarks is a placeholder. Um, and multiple people within the last couple of weeks have been asking about uh, use cases for the CircuitPython logo and CircuitPython itself and uh, Blinka. So, um, I'm going to get that up, updated with some content uh, so that that's clear. Um, and that'll be a living document as well, where as we, you know, find new use cases or, or whatever, we will uh, update that. So that'll be good. Um, there's a few things left to do on the Feather TFT guide. Uh, I have a couple of breakouts that um, have a STEM and QT revision done that the guide needs to be updated. And uh, probably out of order, I will do after the circuitpython.org thing, um, the dot star status LED template page so that Anne can get that into guides because she's waiting on that. And the async IO template uh, as well, which I need the hardware for, but I don't think I'm going to get to it before Thursday anyway, which I will have it by then. So that will be fine. And that is what I've got. All right. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, you've got a lot going on, and you're going to see the output of all of this in guides and uh, examples in the future. So thank you very much. Okay, uh, K-Match, can you go ahead? Okay, thanks, Dan. Okay, so last week, I've been looking at uh, how to uh, view the REPL while you're also looking at other graphic outputs. Uh, and I came to realize that the REPL uh, that shows on the screen with the Blinka logo is just another display I.O. object. So uh, if you can find a way of accessing that, you can show both the REPL um, and make it interactive or show the, I guess, what would be the console of any print statements while you're also looking at your display I.O. window. So uh, I'll show a little video of that uh, and may consider a PR and see if people really want access to that uh, as an option. Uh, this coming week, I uh, hope to uh, uh, spend some time trying to understand more about touch events and how to make them look like gestures rather than just touch down and touch up. Uh, currently, the, the graphical uh, user interface elements that have been developed in display I.O. layout are mostly, or I, I guess solely relying on touch down and touch up. But the question is, could we build other more complex uh, reactions if we translate just touches to something more complex? So in particular, if, uh, I'm looking for uh, demos of that. So if anybody has any uh, ways of pointing me to uh, how to do that conversion, uh, I'd be open to that. 
Okay, thanks a lot. Okay, thank you, K-Match. Okay, uh, Maker Melissa, you're up next. Um, so last week I worked on porting LittleFS to JavaScript some more. I'm continuing along with that. And um, I, had, uh, while I tried to take a little bit of a shortcut in terms of I attempted to use an existing project called LittleFS.js. Uh, but it hasn't been updated in four years, and the uh, format was unusable, so it was at dead end. And so I'm continuing back down uh, the same route. Um, I also updated my Stream Deck Matrix Learn Guide with an updated 3D printable model for the new matrix. And so I'm going to continue doing or continue to debug work that I've done uh, on the little FS stuff in getting the details of the code. Okay, thank you, Melissa. Uh, next up is Tammy. All right, thank you. So last week I got the Circuit Python core build environment set up and working on my computer and submitted my first PR. Um, this week I want to learn my way around the Circuit Python code base a little bit better and maybe find some other low hanging fruit places that I can contribute. And since as was mentioned earlier, I'm planning on starting to stream on Twitch soon. Um, I want to get OBS set up and everything configured this week so that hopefully next week I can do a, my first sort of test stream. And so that's what I'm working on. OK, thank you very much. And go ahead and put a link to your Twitch stream in the, in the chat. That would be great. Thanks. I'll do that. OK, next up, Scott. Hello. Uh, last week I got Beely scanning and advertising going on the S3. Uh, scanning was a carryover from the previous week, but advertising got in. I started on services, servers, and um, characteristics, and I've got a lot more work to do there. Um, I did add a, another example to the Beely library for just advertising that doesn't do any service stuff. Um, I needed that for a test, so I put that there. Thanks to Dan for the quick review. Uh, I On my stream, I started doing uh, a new broadcast net bridge that just uses CircuitPython rather, rather than the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to hope to finish that up this week because it should be doable with just the scanning code that have, has already been there. And I did we did find an issue that the, the infinite timeout wasn't working, so I got a fix for that. Uh, but basically, I'm, I'm really going to try to get deep in the weeds of, of services and characteristics and try to do as much as I can there. I was a little distracted the last week, and so I'm hoping to get my brain thinking about this this week and making some progress. It's a, a bit more complicated than advertising and scanning, so uh, there's more bumps to hit, I think. Uh, besides that, it's uh, I want to wrap up CircuitPython 22, um, either today or tomorrow. Uh, I know Kat, Kat is finishing hers, so... Um, but yeah, that'll happen this week as well. Okay. Thank you, Scott. And uh, I'll read uh, Tetrix contributions um, because they're not in the meeting. Uh, last week, nearing completion on the Discord-linked PyBadge project prototype, working with AsyncIO and DisplayIO has been extremely fun. Apparently, some family and friends would like it. an auto-lighting menorah, so I'm going to try to design a few simple uh, print circuit boards to make assembling them easier. A first for this Becky. He's, uh, a mechanical engineer. This week, in non-CircuitPython news, taking a small great break to work on grad school applications and moving. Uh, mostly, I guess, taking a break because my own workstation is packed up, they say. And that's it for um, for uh, for um, status reports. Uh, we would have in the weeds, but we have nothing in, in the weeds this time. So unless somebody has something, I can move on. Uh, otherwise, we'll close out here. Let me put a couple of timestamps in. Okie dokie. So thank you, everyone. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for January 31st, 2022. Thanks to everyone who participated, whether uh, uh, by typing notes or in the audio chat or however. That's thank you very much.
If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing items from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit. Uh, there are thousands of videos there by Adafruit, and the podcast will be avail available on major podcast services. Uh, this, this meeting will also be featured in the upcoming Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific U.S. time. This meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. If you want to be notified about the meeting and any changes at the time or day, you can ask to be added to the Circuit Pythonistas role on Discord once you join Discord. So we hope to see you all next week. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, I'll be putting up the new notes doc uh, later today for next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. And I will stop recording now. <laughs>